This, this is Charlie, and he came in because he's twitching like this. You see how he's wobbling and wiggling? This is a common thing that dogs get uh, twitching if they eat snail bait. She said there's no way he ate snail pellets. And you can see him, see him twitch like that? So she said he did eat a cigarette butt. That's a really uncommon thing for dogs to have a toxicity from, but I looked it up and cigarette butts can contain 25% of the nicotine in the whole cigarette. So it's a possibility. Most times what we do when a dog is twitching like this is we give them an uh, injection to make them vomit. And then we give them charcoal and we run blood work and uh, we try to figure out what they ate. Was it snail bait? Was it strychnine? In this case, it's, or chocolate. Those three can make them twitch. Cigarette butts. Um, I said snail bait. Flea control in cats can make a cat twitch like this. So there's various things that can give, make them twitch, and we kind of have to roll them out. So we're going to give him the injection as soon as we can. So we're going to put a muzzle on him because he was a little bit, he was a little bit cranky. Um, you can see the muzzles we use are nice nylon ones. So we're going to give him the injection to make him vomit, and I'll show you how that works. I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm sorry. So it's going right in the vein, and then we're giving it right. That reason why we give the, the, the apple morphine right in the vein is that way he'll puke right away. We want him to puke and see if he's got snail bait or see, and of course we want him to puke so we're going to take his muzzle off. <laughs> Aren't we? So we're going to show you, we're going to, we're going to watch you puke now. This is going to be the puke show. So we're putting him in a cage and we're going to see how he does. And you can see, look at how he's standing. And, and now he's not only, now he's not only, uh, twitchy but now he's gonna have to throw up. See how he's licking? So so we gotta make sure that he doesn't uh, collapse or he's close to not being able to uh, be treated with, with that because um, if they're unconscious or really bad then we can't give him that stuff to make him throw up. But because he's doing okay so far, but see he's not He's not too stable on his feet. Let's see what comes up. Well, we're looking for uh, snail bait pellets or a cigarette butt. So not much is coming out. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty unproductive puke. So with poor Charlie, um, you can see we put him inside so we can monitor him a little closer. But his white blood cell and red blood cell is good, and his liver enzymes and kidney enzymes are good. So. Whatever he ate that's causing the tremors isn't affecting his electrolytes or his kidneys or his blood sugar. It's got his, one of his liver enzymes a little high, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. But we are going to put him on some. Um, we're going to put him on some um, IV um, fluids to flush out his organs and and hopefully make him feel better since he's just not able to eat or drink while he's uh, while he's. Um, be feeling sick like this. So you can see not only is he twitching now, but he's feeling pretty darn puny. So we're going to um, use some um, IV fluids to flush out everything and keep him supported while he works off the toxins in the system. And we're going to do that by putting a catheter in and then attach him to IV, IV fluids. Our twitchy one now is hooked up to IV fluids, twice maintenance, and we'll see if he's still twitching as you can see. And we still don't know. We hope it, we wonder if it's a nicotine. But he's looking around. I mean, he's not out of it. He's not seizuring. He's not in terrible shape. He's going, well, he says, can't stand up too good. Now that he quit vomiting, we're going to give him some charcoal orally. And the charcoal is a black, very black, messy stuff that they'll swallow. And it will dilute out any toxins that are clinging to the inside of his, his bowel. So here's Charlie this morning. You can see he's looking around. He's wondering, okay, we've got him out of his cage. And the next thing they wonder is, where's my mom? I want to go home. Charlie, how are you feeling today? You feeling okay? You're no more twitching, Charlie? That's not coughing from toxins. That's pulling on the leash. Charlie's not twitching anymore. Um, and uh, he's bright and alert. And he's looking around because he wants to go home.
It's the next thing. He's stressed because he wants to go home. Where's mom? You want to go? Want to go? He's listening because he knows his mom's coming for him because he knows he's on the way out from the cage and he, he's been, he, this isn't your first rodeo, is it? Anyway, uh, what toxins can dogs get that cause tremors like that? They can, they can eat uh, snail bait, they can eat strychnine, they can have a reaction to flea control, they can, have, they can eat nicotine gum or a nicotine cigarette, but like we think Charlie did. Uh, plants can sometimes cause tremors and shaking. Uh, so, do we always know, oh, and chocolate, but it has to be baking chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate. It's not just ch milk chocolate. Milk chocolate has the theobromine in very small quantities. Everybody rushes their dog off to the emergency clinic because it eats a tiny bit of a milk chocolate bar. That's not always very toxic for dogs. If you're Charlie's size and you eat a couple of milk chocolate bars, that might be a problem. But a little square of a bar is rarely going to cause any problems. So those are the things that cause tremors. We don't always know exactly what causes them. As you saw in the video, I made Charlie vomit to see if anything would come up like snail bait. Well, it didn't, which means it already passed through the stomach and into his intestine. That's why I didn't pump his stomach because I thought, you know what, there's probably little chance I'm going to get anything out because he ate the, the cigarette butt at 7 that morning. Probably was already all the way through his stomach. But anyway, I thought I'd show you a little bit about toxins. Um, you can always give your dog a couple spoonfuls of 2% hydrogen peroxide to make him throw up right away if you see him eat something. That way you can still take him to the emergency clinic, but you can make him throw up. And the faster you get snail bait out, and that's the most common, or chocolate out, the better chances they have if they ate a bunch. What do you think, Charlie? How come you won't look at me? You want to go home? Charlie, 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 Charlie. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching Charlie. Well, you didn't enjoy watching Charlie tremor and puke, but I thought it would be informative. Uh, dogs that tremor that way can have an exposure to snail bait, exposure to chocolate. It could be a nursing mother nursing babies and has a low, having a low calcium. It could be a little tiny puppy that uh, has a low blood sugar and needs some sugar and, need warm, and needs to be warmed up in order to feel better. It could be a dog that's kind of having a petite mal seizure or a small seizure and coming out of it. But most of the time if they tremor like I showed you, if it's a dog it's probably snail bait or chocolate or in this case a cigarette butt which I'm not still not sure it was but it could be. Or if it's a cat it could be that you somebody put I'm not pointing my finger at you, but somebody put on a, a flea control that's supposed to be for dogs. Anyway, um, nervous signs can be also other things. It can be toxins and tumors and things, but I'm just talking about the most common things. So if your dog has eaten snail bait or chocolate, please, you can try to give it, if it's alert, if it's looking at you and you and it's not too severely affected, you can try hydrogen peroxide. If it's really weak or laying on its side, then you can't do that because that can make them throw up and inhale it and may cause um, death. So don't try it on a dog that's really sick. Take it into a vet if you can. And if you have a chance, check out my website, Dog Dish Diet. Um, my book talks about the perils of obesity and how that can cause dogs to, they've shown that it can, they can lose two years of life. Um, allergens in dog food can cause itchy skin and itchy ears. If you want to try to find out what's, what food to feed your dogs, you can read my suggestions to stay off beef, wheat, and even chicken. Or you could try crock potting and cooking a couple ingredients at a time. It's called the limited ingredient diet. In the feed your pet to avoid the vet, I even talk about cooking for cats, even though my cats really don't like home cooking. But um, I also give you ideas on how to feed cats and um, cats could eat raw food. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think it's just a fine food to feed cats because they're predators and it's probably healthier than most of the things we feed them. 
the dry food we feed them causes obesity and diabetes um, and um, we just overfeed cats so just gives you some ideas well have a great day